Hey guys, hope everyone is safe and sound. So welcome back again to this new video. The topic for this is Fjall's principle of management. In this, we'll be exploring the 14 principle that Henry Fjall has suggested. We'll be discussing in detail these 14 principle of management. So let's start. Henry Fiol was born in the year 1841 in France. He was awarded a title of Father of Management Thought. So why was he awarded this title? Why? Because he has made, he made three most important or significant contributions to the management theory. His contributions were, first contribution that he made was, he made a clear distinction between the technical and managerial skills. That means your technical skills are different and your managerial skills should be different. Okay. The second contribution that he made is he identified the functions of management. What are the functions of management? Functions of management, management are planning, organizing, directing, control, uh, staffing and controlling. These five functions we have already discussed in the previous video. Okay. So now the third or the basic focus about this video is about the principles of management, which was Fjall's third contribution to the management theory. So Fjall has identified or has listed 14 such principles of management, which he had grown out of his experience. So these principles are first is your division of work, then authority and responsibility, then discipline, unity of command, unity of directions, subordination of individual interest to general interest, remuneration of personnel, centralization and decentralization, scalar chain, order, equity, stability of tenure of personnel, initiative, spirit de corps. So in this video, we'll be discussing these 14 principles in detail. So the first principle is division of work. According to Fjall, your work should be divided into small tasks or small units so that each employee within your organization should be trained in the job that he has to perform. So this process of breaking small, uh, you're breaking the task into small groups and then training the employees for that assigned task is called as division of labor. This princ principle is based on the principle of specialization. Why specialization? Because if a particular employee is trained and is made to do that work over a continuous period of time, that particular employee gets trained for that work. Now, for example, like if suppose if one person is skilled in computer programming and if that same person continues to do that work over a period of time, so this continuity of work specializes him in that job and consequently what it does is it improves his performance. So the basic focus of division of work is efficient utilization of labor and your specialization efficient by efficient utilization of labor this would result in increased output okay so this principle talks about specialization and increment or increase in your output so the second principle of fiol is authority and responsibility. According to Fjall, authority means the right to take decision and responsibility means obligation with respect to the task 
that one has to perform and for which he is getting paid. So, what does Fiol conceives is, Fiol conceives that authority is a combination of official authority and your personal authority. So, what is the difference between official authority and personal authority? Official authority means the authority that is derived from your manager's official position. Whereas, your personal authority includes your intelligence, your experience, morale, worth, etc. So, Fjol finds that authority and responsibility to be related and there should be a parity maintained between them. Now, for example, if an employee is to be asked, is asked to perform a task, say for a cash clerk. Now, if he is asked to perform the task of a cash clerk, then he should be allowed to take care of all the issues relating to performing the job of a cash clerk, like accepting money in cash, your demand drafts, your time for getting the money, passing entries and so on. So, in the words of Fjol, the result of authority is responsibility. So, it is the natural result of authority and essentially another aspect of authority. So, whenever he says that whenever authority is issued or is used, responsibility is automatically born. This is what Fjol states that whenever you are using authority, your responsibility is automatically born. If you look at the picture here, there is one manager and the other one is your subordinate. So, the manager's responsibility is towards his subordinate, responsibility and authority. Whereas, the subordinate is accountable for his work or for the work or his performance towards the manager. He needs to report to the manager and manager's work is to supervise or to authorize the subordinate. So, this is what authority and responsibility is. Principle of discipline, according to Fjol, discipline means what? It means sincerity, obedience, respect of authority, respect of the rules and regulations of the organization or the enterprise that one is working with. So, he insists that discipline requires good superiors at all levels. So, that there is a clear and fair agreement of all the applications and penalties. So, the basic focus of this principle is that subordinates should also respect the superiors and obey their orders. Like for example, if the company has entered into an agreement with the employees about their wages for say about 5 years, then the company should honor it. Similarly, he insists that the employees should also honor the commitments made by them. It's not only the resp uh, responsibility of the employees for uh, towards the company, but also the company also should be uh, should act responsibility responsibly towards his employees towards its employees sorry so the basic principle of discipline states that it should the focus here is to obey rules of the organization so the employee should maintain or obey the rules that have been set up by the organization Unity of command. What it implies is this principle implies that an employee should receive orders from one superior only. Here the main focus is on one superior. There should be one superior who is giving instructions to your subordinates. Why? Because if he is getting orders from more than one superior or one person, then the subordinate will remain in the state of confusion. To avoid such situation, Fjol focuses that your superiors should give, there should be one superior which, which will be giving instructions to your subordinates. This would result in providing you firstly with a systematic management, secondly it would increase the efficiency of your employees 
and thirdly it would result in increase of your production increase in your output so fuel's focus was that an employee should receive orders from one support one superior to understand this situation better let's take an example take an example of a salesman now this salesman he gets orders from or orders and instructions from your production department also and he gets orders from your marketing departments also so orders of the production department would be different and uh, compared to the orders from your marketing department the main concern for your production department would be to go slow with the sales because they there might be par cuts so that the uh, so there there is less production so the production department would instruct the salesman to go slow with the sales whereas your marketing department would instruct him to sell more so that his targets could be reached so in such a situation it becomes very difficult for this particular salesman to carry out orders from two different person or two different departments because they both are contradictory one is telling you to sell more the other is telling you to sell less so unity of command helps in avoiding such contradictory instructions unity of command what it implies is this principle implies that an employee should receive orders from one superior only here the main focus is on one superior there should be one superior who is giving instructions to your subordinates why because if he is getting orders from more than one superior or one person then the subordinate will remain in the state of confusion to avoid such situation fuel focuses that your superiors should give there should be one superior which which will be giving instructions to your subordinates this would result in providing you firstly with a systematic management secondly it would increase the efficiency of your employees and thirdly it would result in increase of your production increase in your output so fuel's focus was that an employee should receive orders from one support one superior to understand this situation better let's take an example take an example of a salesman now this salesman he gets orders from or orders and instructions from your production department also and he gets orders from your marketing departments also so orders of the production department would be different and uh, compared to the orders from your marketing department the main concern for your production department would be to go slow with the sales because there there might be par cuts so that the uh, so there there is less production so the production department would instruct the salesman to go slow with the sales whereas your marketing department would instruct him to sell more so that his targets could be reached so in such a situation it becomes very difficult for this particular salesman to carry out orders from two different person or two different departments because they both are contradictory one is telling you to sell more the other is telling you to sell less so unity of command helps in avoiding such contradictory instructions unity of direction according to this principle fuel states that unity of direction is the principle that each group of activities having the same objective must have one head and one plan here the focus is one head or one manager and one plan in the previous which was unity of command the focus was on one superior here the focus is on one head and one plan why one head and one plan because this principle calls from one manager one plan for all the operations that have the same objective so that what happens is you take the efforts of all the members of the organization 
towards your common goal you are directing the efforts of your uh, employees towards your organizational goal so this principle when it is applied properly it ensures unity of action and it facilitates coordination so let's take for example suppose an automobile company has three divisions okay one is car scoot second is your scooters and third would be your three wheelers now each department or each division has his own targets since <clears throat> sorry each each department will have his own targets and its own market because all these three segments they have their own market and they have their own problems associated with that particular market so each division must plan its targets as per its environmental conditions so as to achieve better results so thus what does this principle of unity do is sorry unity of direction does is it emphasizes the importance of common goals being pursued by all in a group activity under one head so there should be one head and one plan and what does the manager direct is manager directs the effort of the group activity towards the common goals and objectives of your organization it results in what it results in your efficiency it ensures that the achievement of group goals is done so this is what your unity of direction you are directing the efforts of all or uh, your group of uh, subordinates towards your what do you say your organizational goal so here the manager directs the efforts towards the company's organizational goal this is what unity of direction is you are directing the word direction itself explains you that this principle would relate to directing the efforts subordination of individual interest to general interest what does this principle states this principle states that it is the function of the management to reconcile the interest of the individuals with those of your group if there are any differences in their interest the management's function should be to reconcile them first why to uh, why is the need for reconciling the, the interest of both the groups or both the parties the individuals and the group why because if your workers are motivated then they can perform well right and how they can be motivated like for example if they are working on a project you are appraising the manager but you are not remunerating or motivating your subordinates then obviously they'll feel demotivated so what is motivation for them motivation is appraising them with monetary benefits for example suppose a manager gets an order for a supply of a product he gets his order from his own now can he complete this order alone no he needs a group he needs the operation team which will be actually making the product so it is a group activity the manager cannot perform this activity alone he needs a team so why are we only appraising the manager if that particular product is a success fiol's focus here is you should appraise not even the manager you should appraise the manager but also the team that is behind the manager so if you are appraising the team behind the manager the team that is working on under the manager will also feel motivated and they'll work in the interest of the organization if you are motivating them they'll perform in a dedicating manner so the interest of one person should not take priority over the interest of the organization as a whole so this principle suggests that benefits should be shared by all one person alone cannot meet an order you need a team to work together management is what you manage a team to achieve your objectives so this principle states that one one person's interest should not supersede 
the interest of the organization as a whole. Remuneration of personnel. Now, according to Fiol, your methods of payment should be fair and they should provide satisfaction to your employee and your employer. So, injustice may what it would result in demotivating your employee and thereby hampering your production. So, Fiol's main focus here is your employee should be motivated. If your employees are motivated, then they'll work in the interest of the organization. So, the main focus of this principle is whatever methods of payment a firm or a company is using, it should be fair and it should provide maximum satisfaction to the employer and your employee. Centralization and decentralization. Now, according to Fiol, Fiol does not use the term centralization of authority, but his principles definitely uses or definitely refers to the extent at which your authority is distributed or concentrated. You might be wondering what these two terms mean, centralization and decentralization. So, centralization in a layman language means your concentration of authority and decentralization means your distribution of authority. Fiol suggested in this principle that your degree of centralization and decentralization, it should depend on the nature of the work of your organization or your workload of your manager. Now, the manager should use their intelligence and their judgment when they are making a decision. Because when decision making authority lies within few hands, it is centralization. So, your decision should be correct so that your organizational objectives are achieved. Your decision should be made such that it should help in your help the firm or in achieving the organizational goals. So, when decision making hand or your decision making authority lies within few hands, that is centralization. And when the decision making authority is shared at different levels, that is decentralization. So, these are the two terms that Fiol focuses on centralization and decentralization. Scalar chain. Now, according to this principle of Fiol, scalar chain is what? Scalar chain is your line of authority. Line of authority means you have a chain of superiors that have different ranks from your lowest to your highest. So, he holds it wrong when somebody or a subordinate, he breaks the line of authority. For this, he suggested the management, uh, he suggested that organizations should follow the scalar chain. What is the scalar chain? Now, for example, one wants to communicate with A. How will he make this communication? He either has to follow this long chain to reach A of 2, 3, 4, 5 and then he reaches Z and then from Z the communication is flown downwards to E, D, C, B and then it finally reaches A. So, in this whole long route, what is, what is getting wasted? First is your time. Secondly, you are not sure whether the message that one wants to send to A has, rece has reached as intact. There can be disruption in the message. So, to avoid these wastages, Fiol suggested the, uh, the concept of gangplank. If you look in the picture here, gangplank is what? Gangplank is the members of the same level can violate the scalar chain. Like 3 can directly establish a communication with C. So, this would first save time. Secondly, it would avoid confusion 
as in because there would be a clear flow of authority. Secondly, you, are, you have the systematic chain of authority is followed. So, by jumping the prescribed lines of authorities, these officials, these officials here would be 3 and C, can deal with one another at one sitting and sort out several problems quickly. So, this scalar chain and gang plank is basically focused on stopping the wastage of time and getting the communication done through similar level individuals. The principle of order. Now, according to Fjall, he breaks this order into two types. First is your social order and second is your material order. Order, according to him, is nothing but it is a right place for everything and everything in its place. There should be a system, a system concerned with the systematic arrangement of your men, material and machine. Fjall's main focus here is there should be a place for everything and everything in its place. That means right man in the right place or your job where and right material for the right work. His main focus here is there should be right place for everything and for everyone. This is what is the guiding principle for every management. Equity. Now, this principle of fuel focuses on securing loyal and devoted employees. What is the need to get loyal or to uh, secure loyal and devoted employees? The need is this because if your employees are loyal and dedicated towards your organization, they will work better towards your productivity, your organizational goals can be achieved. So, how you can hold your employees? Your employees could be held by an organization only if the working environment they are working in the organization is treating them equally. There's, there should be no discrimination on the basis of caste, creed or gender in the organization because if the employees feel that there is discrimination or there is uh, there is they are not treated equally, they are not getting paid equally, they are demotivated. So, in order to create loyalty and devotion in the employees, they should be given fair treatment, kind treatment, they should be treated equally. So, if your employees are treated good, ultimately your output is good and your organization goals are achieved. So, fuel main focus of this principle of equity is on treating employees as equally as possible. Stability of tenure of personnel. According to Fjall, stability means what? It means the period of work, the time or tenure that particular person has worked within the organization. So, Fjord shows that instability of tenure of personnel is the result of bad management because frequent changes of personnel may not be good for the organization. So, if any such situation that is avoidable, that can be avoidable, Fjord suggests that it should be taken into consideration. For example, illness, retirement or death of an employee, these are the things that are unavoidable. So, Fjall main focus is that the employees working within the organization should be given job security, career progress in order to hold them back. So, employees work better if job security and career progress are assured to them. So, management, what it should do is it should also ensure that even if there, uh, if certain unavoidable situation occurs, there should be replacements available to fill the vacancy so that your production work or your 
management or uh, sorry your production work or your operation should not stop so there should be proper planning for each thing your stability how you should hold back your employees if they are leaving then what should be their uh, there should be replacements available for them so the work of the manager here should be focused on these things now initiative now this principle of initiative by fiol states that management should encourage its employees to originate and carry out plans that means to propose any plan to execute out plan why because it helps in developing the trust and belongingness among the employees so fiol says that management should be open for suggestions suggestions ideas from the employees and these ideas should be when the employees are formulating a plan or initiating or suggesting an idea they should keep in mind the rules and regulations or the uh, should the plan should adhere to the rules and regulations that have been set up by the organization your idea should not hamper or should not violate the rules that have been set up so fuel's main focus here is why he is focusing on the principle of initiative is that because it develops trust and belongingness among the employees and if the employees within your organization are happy or they have the belongingness towards your organization they will work for the betterment of the organization and thus resulting in the achievement of your organizational goals now the last principle of fuel is spirit the cops this principle emphasizes on the importance of teamwork fuel says that management must foster the morale of its employee he further suggests that real talent is needed to coordinate efforts encourage use each person's ability and reward each person's merit without arousing possible jealousy and disturbing the harmonious relations what does fuel say in this principle is that experiences have shown that team contributes more than individuals so the managers within the organization should take steps to develop a sense of belongingness among the members that are working in a group team spirit team spirit helps in what team spirit first first helps in developing an atmosphere of mutual understanding secondly they'll it helps it also helps in minimizing the need of penalties because there if there is harmony of relation between the organization there will be no penalties your work uh, flow is not interrupted your production is there your efficiency is there and ultimately what is the result your organizational goals are achieved so fuel fuel's main focus on this principle is on teamwork the importance of teamwork as we say every life is a story so guys thank you so much for being a part of my story please like share and subscribe if you're liking the contents of my videos also would request everyone to drop in their comments and suggestions in the comment box of the topics they want me to make a video on thank you so much guys stay safe stay healthy